so you all should be able to see via the screen. If you're not, you know, looking at your screen, if you're just listening to the audio, um, I'm reading these quotes anyway. You don't have to necessarily read along with me. Um, I always think it's beneficial to read along, though. Um, but in this particular lesson, um, this is well, it's going along with the same the same theme that we've been going along now for what is it twenty twenty? This is the thirtieth week, um, and um, you know, we're looking at victory over sin. We're looking at the promise to the overcomers and all the things that God has in store for us. And so we've been looking at this particular topic. Uh, and it, it was birthed, of course, out of um, some conversations that I've had with different uh, individuals, even ministers, and the, the prevailing thought that people will not be able to overcome sin until Jesus comes. You know, it's a common thought that uh, many, many so-called Christians have. And so just challenging to look at this for at least 52 weeks. We'll see um, how that goes here. But the last time we were together, uh, we were looking at uh, uh, some counsels and cautions regarding um, the, the fact that Christ is going to save us from sin, not in sin. And there is a prevailing thought, of course, with many that we are saved in sin and not from it. Um, and that is, you know, expressed in many different, uh, many different ways. Um, you know, I was made, making mention that there are people that e even individuals that, uh, you know, are close to me by way of whether it's uh, uh, relatives or whatever, uh, friends that have this, this thought that, well, you know, Christ died on the cross for my sins, which means that I can continue to sin because they're already paid for, right? And they have this idea that that's how things work. And um, we were looking at some of those counsels and cautions last time showing that, no, that's not how it works. That's not the case. But uh, tonight, we're going to get back into what Christ sends us, of course, because of his victory. And we, we've been looking at that theme over and over and over again uh, from various standpoints. The last one we dealt with was how he was going to give us power. But now we're going to read how he gives us strength. And um, before we actually uh, get into this, there are we need to pray uh first of all you know just for for the lesson but um there are some scriptures also that i would like to uh go over with you just a few maybe two or three um that illustrates the power of god uh, but let's go ahead and pray uh, for the lesson father we have uh prayed generally uh but we want to pray specifically for the lesson tonight, that your Holy Spirit would be the great teacher, that the things that we read, that you would help us to apply them, that we would see the power and blessing and benefit that has been laid for us, the strength that you desire to send us. And so, Lord, I pray that it would hit our heart tonight and that we would have a firm foundation under our feet, one that Satan cannot trip us up in, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, let's look at a few few scriptures, maybe two or three, and um, we'll we'll take we'll take one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament, and uh, maybe sprinkle in one more from either or at the time. So let's um, let's look at Second Corinthians twelve. This is this is a good place to start. Um, there are many scriptures regarding the strength that Christ wants to send us. Many scriptures that deal with that. But I want to look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And of course, in chapter 12, we have these famous words of Paul and this famous interaction, I should say, with Paul and the Lord in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10. Of course, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He calls it a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And from the uh, scriptures in the spirit of prophecy, we can recognize this. This was his poor eyesight. And he was asking the Lord to remove this from him. And of course, the response of the Lord is found in verse nine. So second Corinthians 12, verse nine says, and he said unto me, the Lord said unto to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, verse 10, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And I always refer to this text showing that this is the, the key or the secret 
to a Christian's success, and that is in their weakness. Uh, because when we're weak, then we're strong. Why? Because God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. His grace is sufficient for us. And the victorious Christ wants to send us his strength, right? Uh, so that's a wonderful text there. Another one that is also, uh, that pops into mind that is uh, also a familiar text to many, it would be Isaiah 40, right? Isaiah 40, the mounting up uh, with wings as eagles text, right? So let's go to Isaiah 40, and we're going we're gonna to start in verse 28, uh, not just 31, the final text, but let's start in verse 28. And again, this is regarding how God is going to send us strength and the various promises in the Bible related to that. Um, so in Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31, the Bible says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And so again, we have this strength that God is going to give unto us or going to renew and revive and increase according to this chapter. And um, one more, right? One more. Um, since we're in Isaiah, uh, let's look at Isaiah 26. This is another one that, that comes to mind. It's a short one, uh, just one verse. Uh, so notice Isaiah 26, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 4. We're talking about the strength that God is going to send us. In Isaiah 26, verse 4, the Bible says, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength right? So our strength is found in God. This is not the strength that he's going to bring out of us as if we have this strength innately within us. Instead, this is the strength that we get from God. In the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And so tonight, as we read these various uh, statements, now this is, uh, uh, as I'm putting these, these quotes together, uh, some of the studies, some of the quotes are, uh, you know, shorter. Some of these are longer. This is a long one, so we're not going to look at all the quotes, but um, all of them are all of them are powerful. Um, and so we'll just pick out a few before we uh, take it to the Lord in prayer. Right? We're using these statements as once again season for our prayers. This enables you to know what to pray for when we are coming together in our groups. So the victorious Christ, you should see on your screen, the victorious Christ sends us strength. This first one is from Great Controversy, page 510. It says, Christ will give strength to all who seek it. No man without his own consent can be overcome by Satan. The tempter has no power to control the will or to force the soul to sin. He may distress, but he cannot contaminate. He can cause agony, but not defilement. The fact that Christ has conquered should inspire his followers with courage to fight manfully the battle against sin and Satan. And so uh, I like this quote for many different reasons. It's a very powerful quote, but it starts by saying that Christ is going to give strength to all who seek it, right? So again, Christ sends us strength. Uh, in Acts of the Apostles, the following one, Acts of the Apostles, page 242. It says, God is able, God is able and willing to bestow upon his servants all the strength they need and to give them the wisdom that their very necessities demand. He will more than fulfill the highest expectations of those who put their trust in him. This is a wonderful quote as well, just two sentences. But he's able and willing to you know, provide us with the strength that we need. He's also going to give us the wisdom that we need for our various necessities, right? Whatever our particular circumstances are, he gives us the wisdom for that and the strength that we need to go through them. 
And then this final sentence is so powerful that he will more than fulfill the highest expectations of those who put their trust in him, meaning that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. In this next statement here in Youth Instructor, Youth's Instructor, January 4th, 1900, it says, we have little idea of the strength that would be ours if we would connect with the source of all strength. We fall into sin again and again and think it must always be so. We cling to our infirmities as if they were something to be proud of. Christ tells us that we must set our faces as a flint if we would overcome. He has borne our sins in his own body on the tree, and through the power he has given us, we may resist the world, the flesh, and the devil. Then let us not talk of our weakness and inefficiency, but of Christ and his strength. When we talk of Satan's strength, the enemy fastens his power more firmly upon us. When we talk of the power of the mighty one, the enemy is driven back. As we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Amen. And so we, we, don't, we don't really have it. We don't really fathom, right, the strength that could be ours if we would connect with the source of all strength. We don't have to sin, friends. We don't have to keep falling, thinking that it's always going to be this way. And this this statement was personal to me because as I was reading this, it went back into many times I prayed to the Lord, like, Lord, it just seems like I'm always going to sin. It just seems like I'll never overcome, right? And it doesn't have to be this way, right? We can find strength in Christ. In, In, excuse me, in volume two, of the testimonies, uh, page 312. You can walk in the light and daily receive strength from God to overcome every imperfection and finally be among the faithful, true, and holy in the kingdom of God. Yield not to temptation. So we can daily receive strength from God and overcome every imperfection if we walk in the light. Uh, In Review and Herald, August 4th, 1896, but in God, there is strength to overcome all temptations. When you're tempted, let your heart go out to God in prayer for strength to resist the enemy. Very simple one there, but we don't have, there's no, there's nothing that we can be tempted with that God hasn't provided strength for. There's nothing we can be tempted with that there is no provision to overcome it, right? In God, there is strength to overcome all temptations. In Signs of the Times, September 5th, 1900, he is the redeemer and restorer, and those who call upon him in faith will receive strength to overcome every wrong habit and practice. Amen. Volume 5, page, volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 510, He, Christ, fought and conquered Satan that he might give us vantage ground, bringing us divine strength to conquer appetite and every unholy passion. He gives us strength. In Review and Herald, September 30th, 1909, the science of overcoming as Christ overcame is the science of salvation. If we will unite with Christ in the work of developing Christian character, if we will maintain unwavering faith in God and in the truths of his word, we shall be given strength to overcome every evil thing in the life, right? Wonderful, powerful promises. You know, uh, again, as we're going through these, consider this is, again, the 30th week. And so for each week that we have gone over these promises, we've been looking at these promises from different angles. These are not the same quotes we're reading over and over again. We're talking about 30 weeks, hundreds, if not thousands by now, at least uh, in the lessons I've put together, I haven't read them all, but uh, of quotes regarding the power, the strength, the victory, all of these things regarding our ability uh, to overcome sin. I mean, this was the focus of inspiration, right? Is that we can be over comers. And tonight he can give us strength to overcome every evil thing 
in the life. In volume four of the Testimonies, page 147, he will remove every obstacle from before the feet of his faithful ones or give them strength and courage to conquer every difficulty. If they earnestly beseech his help, all hindrances will vanish before an earnest desire and persistent effort to do the will of God at any cost to self, even if life itself is sacrificed. Light from heaven will illuminate the darkness of those who in trial and perplexity go forward looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of their faith. Now, this particular statement is, wow, it's a very powerful and pointed statement because this one for me gives me the understanding of why we fall, right? There are times when we're tempted and we go to the Lord in prayer, we ask him for help to overcome the temptation, and we don't necessarily resist unto blood striving against sin, as the Bible says. If we're honest with ourselves, if it came to us giving up our life itself to overcome, right, we'd probably just go ahead and do the sin. But that's the problem. We need to come to the point where we would rather die than sin. And this is something that God can implant in the soul, and that comes from our love to God. And this is why in my own personal devotions, and I try to just spend that time to learn about God's love and how to love him back and to really just, just be engulfed in the love of God. Because if I love him, of course, I'll do his commandments. And if I love him, I'll be willing to sacrifice life for him. And here, I'm going to read this statement again because it's so powerful. In volume four of the Testimonies, page 147, he will remove, God will remove every obstacle from before the feet of his faithful ones or give them strength and courage to conquer every difficulty if they earnestly beseech his help. All hindrances will vanish before an earnest desire and persistent effort to do the will of God at any cost to self, even if life itself is sacrificed. Light from heaven will illuminate the darkness of those who in trial and perplexity go forward looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of their faith. It's powerful. Desire of Ages, page 429, it says, it is faith that connects us with heaven and brings us strength for coping with the powers of darkness. In Christ, God has provided means for subduing every sinful trait and resisting every temptation, however strong. Amen. In Review and Herald, May 4th, 1897, only the obedient will be accepted. Excuse me, only the obedient will, only the obedient will, let me read this right, only the obedient will is accepted by God. And by constant reliance upon his power, we may gain strength to do his commandments. Strength is the key word tonight. And how Christ will give us strength. In Review and Herald, also this is April 27th, 1905. Give yourself to Christ, trust in him, and he will give you strength to resist the enemy. Then it says, make the Bible the man of your counsel. Only thus can you gain strength to overcome. So in this particular, uh, these particular paragraphs, right, this is paragraph five and paragraph 11, I extrapolated two thoughts here. The first in paragraph five, it talks about giving ourselves to Christ and trusting in him. And by doing that, he gives us strength to resist the enemy. And of course, we do that through, you can say we do that through prayer, right? Through our prayer and consecration. And by doing that, he gives us strength to resist. But then in paragraph 11, it talks about making the Bible the man of our counsel, studying the scriptures, making sure we put the scriptures in our hearts. And only thus can we gain strength to overcome. So prayer and Bible study, two key points. Sometimes we think they're so simplistic, there must be another way. No, these are the two ingredients. These are the two things that are important in our overcoming. And by doing both, he gives us strength. In volume one of Selected Messages, page 316. 
that God's dear son should have to come to our world to fight our battles for us, that we might have strength to conquer in his name, should ever humble our proud hearts. When we consider what Christ did, what he went through, what he gave up, what he, and literally what he gave up and never received again, right? He is forever our elder brother. His humanity is retained. He was given to our, uh, the human race, right? When we consider that he had to come to our world to fight our battles for us, that we can have strength to conquer in his name, we should, it, should, it should humble forever our proud hearts. And youth instructor, August 24th, 1893, old and young, we need to pray most earnestly and believe most trustingly that the merits of Christ, the merits of Jesus Christ will suffice to bring grace and strength and determination to enable us to overcome every defect. We need to pray earnestly, friends. Review on Herald, March 21st, 1912, but in the strength of Christ, cease to sin. Every provision has been made that grace should abide with you and that sin may appear to you at may appear to you the hateful thing it is, right? You know, I, we often say to people or maybe into our own selves, we consider the point that, you know, we need to come to the point of hating sin. And then when we hate sin with a perfect hatred, then we'll, we'll cease to do it. Well, every provision, provision's been made, right? Every provision's been made. Every grace uh, has been given that sin may appear to us that hateful thing that it is. The only way that sin will ever really appear hateful is when we see it through and consider it through the cross. Until we see it the way that the angels saw it, because remember, it wasn't until the cross that the full mask of Satan was removed from those angels that had uh, decided to stay with God. They, They didn't really fully understand what was going on. They still had some sympathies in their heart for Lucifer that was cast out of heaven. But when the cross, when it came to Calvary, it was at that point that all the the mass was removed. And they saw sin for what it really was when they saw sin in the light of what it did to the loving Savior, the sinless one that was then but they understood the exceeding sinfulness of sin. And friends, if it took angels to see it through the cross, why not us? We have to see it through the cross too. So in the strength of Christ, cease to sin, it says. Let's look at a few more before we go to prayer. In Signs of the Times, September 29, 1887, we cannot individually or as a body, secure ourselves from his or Satan's constant assaults. But in the strength of Jesus, every temptation, every opposing influence, whether open or secret, may be successfully resisted. Can't do it on our own. Can't even join as a body to overcome, right? But in the strength of Jesus, we can do so. It says in, in uh, Youth Instructor, May 1st, 1859, go to God and often plead with him for strength. It will be given. Jesus has promised to hear the needy when they cry. Claim the promise. It will be verified. Beautiful, beautiful statement. In Review and Herald, November 2nd, 1897, Christ is the source of all true strength. He reveals his grace to all true believers. He imparts to them his own merits and grace and goodness that they may bear fruit unto holiness. So Christ is the source. And then a review in Herald, September 24th, 1903. If they will honor God by obeying his commandments, they will be exalted by him. He will give them strength and victory, all right? Few, few more here. Let's just kind of jump down. Uh, we'll read, let's read these, let's read these three before we close in our 
uh, close our general discussion and then go to our prayer groups here. Uh, these are, I think all three are from Review and Herald. So the first one is Review and Herald, September 10th, 1895. It says, the work of Christ in the heart does not destroy man's powers. I like this one. The work of Christ in the heart does not destroy man's powers. Christ directs, strengthens, ennobles, and sanctifies the faculties of the soul. It is through personal acquaintance with him that we become qualified to represent his character to the world. So this is a good one. Uh, all of them are good, right? All of them are powerful. But this one lets us know that it's not that when Christ enters into the heart, you know, the powers and the faculties that he's given us are kind of removed and replaced. No, no, no. The work of Christ in our heart doesn't destroy our, our powers, doesn't destroy, destroy these faculties. Instead, Christ directs, strengthens, sanctifies those faculties, right? He's the one that gives power to them. In Review and Herald, September 22nd, this is 1896. It says, with his long human arm, he, this is Christ, with his long human arm, Christ encircled humanity, while with his divine arm, he grasped the throne of inf the infinite God. And thus man has strength given him that he may overcome Satan and triumph in God. Help is brought within the reach of perishing souls. The adversary is rebuked. Amen. So by that dual nature of humanity and divinity, that, uh, that divine nature, he was able to connect us with the source of all strength. And that strength is given us that we might overcome Satan and triumph in God. And then finally, also review and herald. August 26, 1890. And this goes into uh, one of the, well, to me personally, a very wonderful promise. It is faith that will not be discouraged that hears the voice of Christ saying, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world and my divine strength is yours. It is the faith that hears him say, lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world, right? These are always a wonderful promise, right? The faith that we must have is the faith that will not be discouraged and that will hear Christ say that we can be of good cheer because he's overcome the world and his divine strength is ours. And then that same faith hears him say that he hasn't left us we don't have to fight on our own. He is with us always, even until the end of the world. I think that is a wonderful, wonderful promise, wonderful statement to end our general lesson on tonight. We have read through many, 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 many statements regarding how Christ will give us strength. And friends, he gives us this strength and he doesn't say here, Go ahead and utilize it and backs off. No, the promise is that he's right there in the battle with us. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And if we have the faith that won't be discouraged, we'll know that his divine strength is ours. And he has overcome the world. Heavenly Father, tonight we are extremely grateful extremely uh, spiritually energized I am, Lord, to know that uh, the strength that helped Christ overcome is available for me. It's available for us all if we would but have a faith that will not be discouraged. Lord, there are so many different things that confront us on a daily basis. Satan tries to discourage us, uh, to discourage our faith. But if we will take our faith Though it even be but the, as small as a mustard seed, Lord, we can, be, we can remove the mountains or move the mountains of difficulty, move the mountains of temptation, move the mountains of trials and turmoil and have victory. Lord, you are there with us. You have promised us tonight. And through these manifold promises, Lord, we come before you reminding you of them. 
laying them before you, saying, Lord, you have promised that if we would but come and that we would but ask that the strength would be provided for us, well, Father, we need that strength tonight. We ask, Lord, that the divine strength, even the divine Holy Spirit, would come upon us and give us victory over our sins. Give us victory over the temptations that 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 so easily cause us uh, or lead us, I would say, uh, into failure. I pray, Lord, that you would be with each and every home that is represented tonight online, that your Holy Spirit would abide, that your peace would be upon those households, all the households, my household, and that you would help us to understand, Lord, that every way, every provision, every grace has been provided for us that we might not only overcome sin, but that we might learn to hate it with a perfect hatred. Help us to see it through the lens of the love as dis displayed on Calvary. This is our prayer tonight. I ask, Lord, that as uh, we go to the groups of prayer, that, you're, that you would still abide with us, and that as we uh, raise our petitions, that the wonderful blood of Jesus Christ would moisten our prayers, as we season them with your promises, that they might be accepted in, in the Father's heart. Guide us in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.